Greetings from Minnesota, where the spring peepers are in full swing outside the window. I can hear them as I'm talking, and they're really the sound of spring to me. I wish I could be there with you this morning, uh, but I'm grateful to Steve Herb and the Pennsylvania Center for the Book for making this videotape possible. I'm also grateful to the Penn State University Librarians, the Pennsylvania School Librarians Association, and of course Lee Bennett Hopkins for sponsoring this prize. I also thank all those hard-working judges who read all of those poetry books and chose Song of the Water Boatman. I'm very, very honored to be accepting this award, this Lee Bennett Hopkins Poetry Award. Uh, it's named for one of my poetic heroes, and I have met Lee on several occasions. I don't know him well, but I remember the first time I met him, and it was at the University of Minnesota's uh, Curlin Collection. He was giving a talk, and he was very vivacious, of course, and I charged up to him afterwards, very eager, and uh, introduced myself and talked about my writing, and he was very kind to me and listened. But the thing that I remember most about that meeting was uh, his lecture, his talk, and in particular one thing that he said in referring to our tendency to overanalyze poetry as teachers. He said that we should read it and shut up and go on to math. I've always remembered that. This award is very special to me because it's uh, about poetry. It's a poetry award, and poetry to me is is a mysterious thing. Um, it's something that you can you can't really define. It comes from a special place, uh, sometimes in whole sentences, and sometimes it doesn't come at all. And sometimes the revision can be brutal, but um, it's something that I, I love to do and I've always been interested in and it seemed like the perfect medium for this book for uh, a book about a group of mysterious creatures that live beneath the water. I had much occasion to think about creatures like this um, in my children's growing up period when I spent many hours sitting next to ponds and lakes, watching them swim, digging with them, catching frogs. I would think about what lived beneath the surface, what happened to them in the wintertime. And together we started researching these things. And being a poet, I became enchanted with their names, names like Whirligig Beetle and Back Swimmer and Water Boatman. They just seemed so interesting to me that I wanted to write about them. Uh, I put the project aside for several years not knowing exactly how to approach it uh, and then eventually thought of uh, putting together a chorus of voices, a uh, poetic chorus of all of these creatures and that's when the project really came alive to me. Fortunately, editor Ann Ryder of Houghton Mifflin believed in this project and Becky Prang created beautiful artwork to go along with it. I've been asked to read a poem from this book and I've chosen one called Travel Time which is about a very tiny creature called a water bear which actually is visible if you look very closely at some moss and you see something moving it's probably a water bear. It moves very slowly and has the amazing ability when things dry up to itself dry up into a dormant state and be blown by the wind anywhere and until it reaches a warm, moist place again and, and then it can come back to life. And that just seems like a wonderful way to live to me. So I read this poem in celebration of having found a patch of moss myself after many years of drought. It's called Travel Time. In late summer, when the old hot sun drains the pond and every drop of water sizzles and bakes, the water bear stops her lumbering, folds her tiny claws against her chest and shrinks, shrinks smaller than she already is. 
a speck, a grain, a microscopic den packed with weightless paws. She waits for wind to take her somewhere cooler, wetter, more like spring. Thank you very much.